So start on the left and work your way right, page by page. We just finished a series called Pentecostal Powerhouse. And we looked at it from the aspect of what does it mean to be spiritually in shape, so to speak. So to speak. And we looked at it from the aspect of the person who goes to the gym all the time and works out. It does not happen overnight. Now today we get to start our new series. And everybody can say yay because this only happens once every few months and probably at the most twice a year that we start a new series. Because we tend to go a little in depth. And by a little, I mean a lot. But we're looking at the book of Psalms. And when we look at, think about the book of Psalms, of course, this is the book that everybody goes to in their time of need. If there's one book in the Bible that everybody knows, it's the book of Psalms. Plus, it's easy to find. You open up your Bible, and there it is, smack dab in the middle. But Charles Spurgeon, the, preachers of, the Prince of Preachers, said this about the book of Psalms. The delightful study of the Psalms has yielded me boundless profit and ever-growing pleasure. Common gratitude constrains me to communicate to others a portion of the benefit with the prayer that it may induce them to search farther, further for themselves. And when we look at this individual, he's not just the Prince of Preachers and he's known for his preaching ability, but when it comes to the book of Psalms, there's probably nobody else that wrote a better commentary on the book of Psalms than Charles Spurgeon. Now when we look at the book of Psalms, it is different than any other book in the Bible. If we go to the epistles of Paul and we look at them, they are one book. Paul was writing to the Corinthians, or he was writing to the Ephesians. If we go back to the book of Genesis, Moses was recording the history of Israel. If we go to the Leviticus, they were talking about the law. But the book of Psalms is not written as a single book. It is a collection of various psalms written by different composers over a period of time which, ever, which they span basically the whole Old Testament history of the Jews. And when we talk about the book of Psalms, it's no different than if you reach ahead of you right now and book it, pull out the hymns of glorious praise. Or you pull out what we call the old hymnal. I don't even remember the name of it anymore. There are song books. That is exactly what the book of Psalms is. It is a Hebrew song book. Song book. When we look at the name Psalms itself, it is taken from the Hebrew title uh, word Tehillim. And it literally means praises or songs of praise. Now, just a side note. When we look at the book of Psalms, how do we know if something's singular or something's plural? Yes. 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 How many times have you heard somebody say, let's turn to Psalms 22? There's not more than one Psalms 22. <laughs> Just like there's not more than one of the same song in the hymn book. When we refer to the book as a whole, we refer to it as, a, as the book of Psalms because it is a book of praises. It's a book of songs. But when we refer to each individual psalm, it is a psalm, no S. Singular, because it is just one song or one praise. When we look at the English word for the book of Psalms, because well, let's face it, our Bibles are not written in French, they're not written in Spanish, they're in English. We read and write in English. And the title of our Psalms, of our book, is Psalms. Where do we get that word from? We get it taken from one of the older manuscripts uh, known as the Septuagint. When Jesus quoted from the Bible throughout his ministry, you know he didn't quote from the King James Version of the Bible. It wasn't around yet. But rather he quoted from the Greek Bible, which was their compilation of the Hebrew writings, and it was known as the Septuagint. It is the Septuagint word for the book of Psalms 
that we take and get the book title Psalms. I should say Latin. And the Latin word used in the book of uh, in the Septuagint was Psalmi. So it's not hard to see the connection there. Psalmi, Psalms. We got the book of Psalms. And it means exactly as I've already told you about. It means praises or songs of praise. When we look at the book of Psalms itself and start going down the list of vernaculars, all those pages are for today. You want to start on the left, work your way right, and they each go behind each other in order. But when we look at the book of Psalms, it is the largest book in the entire Bible. And like I said, if you open up your Bible, it is smack dab in the center of it. And we'll just hold tight for a little bit. And we'll just pause here for a moment so everybody else can catch up. Sister Jan, there are notes on the communion table. There are a ton of notes to get us started today. They start from the left, towards the way right, and just go behind each other. But as we would say, the book of Psalms, the title actually means praise, or the book of Psalms of Praise. We get the title, the book of Psalms, for our English Bible from uh, the Septuagint, which was the Bible that Christ quoted from during his lifetime. It was not quoted written as a single book, but it is a book of various songs. And what is a song? It is nothing but a poem set to a beat, set to music. It is the largest book in the entire Bible, and if we open up our Bible, smack dab in the middle, we find the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms itself contains 150 chapters, 2,461 verses, and 43,743 words. Did you count that? I was just going to say, if you want to sit down and take the time to count them and you find that I was wrong, <laughs> A, I got this from another source. And B, I might imply that you skipped a word or added a word somewhere and counted it twice. <laughs> it does contain the longest chapter in the entire Bible. And that would be Psalms 1. I, I messed up. I told you not to do it. Psalm chapter 119. We talked about that little S on the end. We do not say Psalms 22. We say Psalm 22 because... It is a single psalm. It is a single one. When we're referring to more than one psalm, then we add the S for psalms. When we look at psalms itself, it also contains the shortest chapter in the entire Bible, which would be Psalm 117. 117. Well, 133 might be short, but it's not as short as Psalm 117. Psalm was just two verses? Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. That's it. <laughs> now here's the neat bit about Psalm chapter 17. It is the shortest chapter in the entire Bible. However, if you open up your Bible to the exact center, you're going to find yourself at Psalm 117. If we would try to determine a key verse for the book of Psalms, Psalm. It would probably be Psalm 29 and verse 2. If someone would please read that. Psalm 29 and verse 2. Right 
When we think about books in the Bible, we often think that one person wrote one book, which is true. But when you look at a magazine and you open it up, you have all those different articles in there. Not one person wrote all those articles. You might have an editor, but not one person wrote all those articles. You open up the newspaper, not one person wrote all those articles in the newspaper. Or rather, somebody might have compiled them, who's known as an editor. When we look at the book of Psalms, it is exactly that. It is a Jewish songbook. So not one person wrote the entire book of Psalms, but rather there were many authors, but basically three editors or compilers. So there is no one main author when it comes to the book of Psalms, and that makes it different from all the other books to begin with. Now, the book of Psalms itself falls into the category of poetry and wisdom literature. Do you all have Appendix A? It'll have a chart that says genres of biblical literature, or the books of the Bible by genre. Man has compiled the books of the Bible into different categories. And this is just one version. Some put out a little bit more, but this is one of the best ones I could find. You have those books that refer to the law. Genesis, Exodus, the biggest numbers. You have those books that deal with the history of Israel, which we could go down as Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and in the New Testament, of course, we have the book of Acts. You have wisdom and poetry, which in the Old Testament, Job would fall under, book of Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. Then you have those that deal with prophecy, and no surprise that the prophets are under there, both the major ones and the minor ones. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Daniel, Hosea, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nathan, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, and of course the book of Revelation. Then of course we have the books of the gospel, which if we had to guess which they are, we would all know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then you have the letters, the epistles, whatever you want to refer to them as, uh, and they would be, of course, they call them, we refer to them as Pauline, some of them, referring to the Apostle Paul, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, then you have the general epistles, which would be Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd, 3rd John, and then Jude. So this is how some people have divided the books of the Bible into the categories. Like I said, some put on that a little bit more, but I think this is the best that we can find. And when we look at the book of Psalms, it actually falls into the category of wisdom literature. Of poetry and wisdom. And we've already talked about which the divisions of the genres. Now, let's look at the compilation or the compiling of the book of Psalms. We've already said that who is not the author of all the Psalms? Some may say that Psalm is, that David is, we know that it's not true. He's not the author of all the Psalms. He is the author of a lot of the Psalms. But another reason if you ever hear people say that, well, David's the author of Psalms is because he's the first one who started compiling Psalms. To be completely accurate, David did not write the book of Psalms. But rather compile. Remember that editor we were talking about, the magazine, the newspaper? That's where David falls into this category. He wrote some of the, some of the songs, but he did not write all of them. Therefore, he is known as more of a compiler, especially in the first section of the book. There were, it is believed that there were three people throughout the course of history who compiled the book of Psalms. David is the very first one. And why would David be, and it's believed that he is the one that came up with the idea of compiling the book of Psalms. Because the book of Psalms is no different than the book that is right in front of you on the back of the next pew. It is a psalm book. We have the hymns of glorious praise, we have the old hymnal. The book of Psalms is a Jewish um, psalm book. Does that mean that it's not inspired in any way, that we just take that this is what they phrase? No. 
the book of Psalms is prophetic, is the inspired word of God, but it is a, Jew, a Jewish song. That is exactly what it is. And it is believed that David was the first one to start compiling this song. We get that taken from 1 Chronicles 15. We're not going to read the whole thing because it would be basically two chapters. But you have it there in your notes. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1, all the way through 16 and verse 43. And it's believed that when David brought the ark back to Jerusalem, he started making preparations for the building of the temple. We know that David, throughout his lifetime, through studying the word of God, he started gathering the building blocks to build the temple. But God said, no, there's too much bloodshed on your hands. You cannot build my house. But along with those preparations, we also know there was, David arranged a Levitical choir. A choir, a group of people who would play instruments, a group of people that would sing, and play before the ark continuously day and night. They would sing praises unto God. And these praises were not just made up songs or whatever we fell on a whip, but rather David was compiling a songbook for them. And thus we have the beginning of the book of Psalms. Because it is believed that David, while he had that choir and that orchestra around the ark, praising God 24-7, it wasn't meant to be a temporary thing. When people talk about the tabernacle of David, where the ark of the covenant was, they talk about it being temporary. Because, of course, every, all those pieces of furniture in the ark eventually find, found the final resting place where not the most wrong story brother Mount Sinai Mount Sinai and what was on Mount Sinai not Mount Sinai I think I'm all confused what's it no it wasn't Mount Sinai anyhow we're getting to the temple now my mind's going to be wondering what mountain that was because I know that I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. Yeah. <coughs> it's where Isaac went to be offered. I know that much. Oh, yeah. No, that was the Noah's Ark. Oh, okay. That was Noah's Ark. It's the same mountain that um, Isaac went to be offered up on. Now, I can't remember right now. But moving on, the temple was built up there. And that was the permanent home for the presence of God, for the Ark of the Covenant, for the golden candlestick. <laughs> But it was also meant to also still, in David's mind, still have that Levitical choir wrapped around it or up there in the temple singing in some portion or por some fashion or another. And because of that, if you're going to keep singing, you need a songbook. You can't just be making up songs on a whim all the time. At least I can. Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah. Close, but that was good. It got me in the right direction. Mount Moriah. I didn't know that. That's okay. That's fine. Um, the interesting thing is that if you study out, uh, what else was there? I think it goes Isaac being sacrificed, Jerusalem, and Mount Moriah all being in the same mount. There's three interesting connections there if you ever study it out. But anyhow, David meant for the Levitical choir to be permanent in the house of God. So he began compiling a song book. Once again, if you read 1 Chronicles chapter 15, 1 through 31, that's where we get the establishment where David's starting to assemble the choir, the Levitical choir, and making, getting all the arrangements made. And Hezekiah might also back up this notion that David intended for the Levit Levitical choir to be permanent and was the one who began compiling the book of Psalms. Would someone please read 2 Chronicles 29, 25, through 30. Second Chronicles 29, 25 through 30.
when his son reigned in his stead. Now the acts of David, the king, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel, the seer, in the book of Nathan, the prophet, and in the book of Gad, the seer. With all, with all his reign and his might, and the times that went over him, and over Israel, and over all the kingdoms of the country. So Hezekiah gives us some insight in 2 Chronicles 29, 25 to 30, that David might have intended for this political choir to be permanent. So that's where we're coming from. So the choir, we believe, was not meant to be a temporary thing in the Davidic tabernacle, but it was meant to be employed in the actual temple itself on a more permanent basis. And when we look at, if someone please find Psalm 72, 20. So Psalm 72 and verse 20. We, she, she totally read the wrong thing. Do you have it? Sometimes, I won't lie, sometimes it's low and I'm, I can't hear everything back there. It's raining, man. <laughs> Document that. My mom states, it's raining, man. Do you have it, Gretchen? No, I lost it now. Okay. It's all right, it's all right. We'll back up, we'll read the same right one. Um, well, hold on, brother. Hold on, brother. We're not there yet. Do you want 2 Chronicles 29? 2 Chronicles 29, 25, or 30. Yeah, we, we derailed tra our train somewhere, so just hold off for Psalm 72. Yeah, I just had practice on that one. It's okay. That was a practice run. Let's try 2 Chronicles okay. 29, 25, or 30. Okay, I'm sorry. It's all right. And he said the Levites in the house of the Lord were simple, psalteries, and parts, according to the commandment of David and Gad the king, seer. And Nathan the prophet, for so was the commandment of the Lord by his prophets. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests of the trumpets. And Hezekiah commanded to offer the burnt offering upon the altar. And when the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord began, began also with the trumpets of the instruments ordained by, king, by David, king of Israel. And all the congregation worshipped, and the sinners sang, and the trumpeter sounded, and this continued until the burnt offering was finished. When they had made an end of offering, the king and, that, and all that were present with him bowed themselves in worship. Moreover, Hezekiah the king and the princes commanded the Levites to sing praise unto the Lord with the words of David and the base of the seer, and they sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads in worship. Okay, two things right here. Who arranged for the singers and everything originally did Hezekiah say? They were arranged by they were arranged by David. I take notice that they were singing songs by two different people. Who were they? Well, they were singing songs by David. Yeah. Yeah. Who were they? No, wrong songs. Who do we think of when we think of the book of Psalms? You know about an individual or a... There's two individuals that was mentioned, and they sang the songs of so and so and so and so. David and Asaph. Exactly. And we go to the book of Psalms. Where can we find songs written by David and Asaph? In the book of Psalms. So when we look at it, it's, it's believed that from right this passage right here, that David intended for the Levitical choir to be permanent in the house of God. Now, David, we already read that as Hezekiah testified, wrote some of the songs, or some of the psalms. But we also have further evidence that David was also one of the compilers of the book of the Psalms. If you have Psalm 72, brother? Yeah. Psalm 72 and verse 20. <coughs> That's fine. That's fine, brother. The songs of David, the son of Jesse. Are ended. That's what I, I yeah, yeah. But I was just looking at that verse because that verse right there is where we believe that David was one of the compilers of the book of Psalms. In fact, the first compiler up to that point. Because we'll talk about the divisions of the book of Psalms here in probably about five minutes. If our train doesn't fall off the tracks again. Um, but. I wasn't blaming anybody, I'm just saying. But how many of us have heard that song, The Love of God? 
The love of God is so rich and pure. You realize that three different people wrote that one song? The last verse was actually written found on the walls of a mental institution. And somebody recorded them and documented them and added them to that verse. The same thing is true when it comes to the book of Psalms. It is believed that there were three editors in the book of Psalms. A second editor came along after David, and he compiled a section of the book of Psalms as well. And we know this because all of a sudden there is a shift in the change of the Psalms when they reference God to a degree because we no longer see God being mentioned as David referred to him, but all of a sudden we see that Hebrew word being introduced into our English, Elohim, which if we go back to the very beginning, in Genesis chapter 1, 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, we would not see Elohim there, we see God, but if we study it out, it's Elohim, God the Creator. But there is a change from the use of referencing God with the use of referencing God as Elohim. He also attached additional titles to the book of Psalms, such as additional Davidic Psalms, sections from the two Levitical collections of Korah and Asaph, and miscellaneous Psalms. So with some of those titles where we see uh, a Psalm of David or something like this, he's one of those that went back and gave us insight and added those titles to it. So we know who wrote it a little bit. Now, that does not mean that we know who wrote every single Psalm, but he went back throughout his section and added those titles to them. Well, we see uh, some, something, something, uh, and referencing the sons of Korah. And finally, we have a third editor to the book of Psalms. He edited, he compiled 28 Psalms without any titles, 15 Psalms with the title, the Psalms of Ascent, which were the Psalms that the Jews sang as they actually traveled to the temple each year. And this is why I should walk away when I'm teaching. 13 Davidic Psalms, or 13 Psalms where he gave reference that David was the author. Sundry poems. And he's the one that concluded the book of Psalms. So we, when we look at the book of Psalms, not one individual wrote the book of Psalms. But rather there were many different people, just like your song. If you can think of it that way. There are many different songs written by several different people. Or many different people. But they all make up one book. But not one person wrote it. The book of Psalms is exactly the same way. This is the Jewish song. This is what it is. And it has many songs, 150, written by different people. Not all the same people. But they were compiled into one songbook by three different individuals. Does that make sense? So we're all on the same page. So David did not write the book of Psalms. He compiled a portion of it, and he wrote several of the Psalms or songs in there. Do you know who the other two people are? I'm confused. I'm sorry. The two what? other editors, do they have names? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I'm Their mom just said, hey, you get over here. <laughs> but no, I, it all honestly, when I study, I study. I mean, I really, really study. We just know that David was the compiler of the first one. We get that from his intention and motive for compiling a Jewish songbook. He wanted something permanent. We have reference to him being an editor in Psalm 72 and 20, where we see the songs of David are edit, ended, meaning that was the portion of the book that he compiled, but we don't know who compiled the other ones. Any other questions? I don't mind stopping to answer. I really don't. We're all here to learn. But no, in all my research and digging, I have not found anything. Now, remember we talked about the divisions of the book of the Bible with the genres. You have the wisdom and literature books. You have the prophecy books, the books of the law, and so forth. <coughs> Would someone please open up the Psalm chapter 1 and verse, um, right above verse 1. And tell me what your Bible states. And it shouldn't even be verse 1. It should be above verse 1. What 
What does yours say, Mama? Very long. You want to read it for us? No, no, you don't have to go through that. I'm looking for something specific, so just, you can leave the verses out. Okay. This is just a study Bible, so I'm just going through a little bit. Okay. Psalms 2 and 95 were written by David in addition to these 12, or by Asaph, a priest who headed the service of music, tenor by the sons of Korah, the oldest singer, singers, and composers, two are by Solomon. Israel's most powerful king, one is by Moses, one is by Newman, a wise man, and one by Ethan. Another wise man, the remaining 50 songs are anonymous, but tradition attributes them, attributes them to Ezra. Is that all you have? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take the reins a little bit because every Bible might be a little bit different. Okay. Up, maybe at the top of your page or just above Psalm 1. Does everybody have Psalm 1? We're we'll just all open our Bibles here. something that might say the first book of Psalms, maybe book one, the Genesis book. Like I said, every book, Bible's different. Why didn't you say something? Each book, 
They all end with a doxology or a short praise to God. So it's as if we're wrapping up that section, that book. They all end with a short praise to God. Now, within the books themselves, sometimes there are subdivisions. When we get into um, the last book in uh, Deuteronomy, book 5 in Psalms, we find the Songs of Ascent. In Psalms, in books 1 through 5, you have the Hallelujah Praises. And a little bit in Deuteronomy as well. So there are some subdivisions, or subtitles, I should say. And like I said, when we talk about the songs of ascent, um, ascent which we'll talk about later, these are the, those are the songs that the Jews sang when they were going to the temple. So you can almost picture them as they're going on their long journey, singing these songs as they go. Okay, and for the sake of time, we are going to end there for today. Does anybody have any? Thoughts, any questions, anything that they want to ask. Before, since we have about five minutes, I will get, make reference to um, Appendix B from the back table. These are all, these are what I have titled as singable songs. These are songs that people nowadays don't take from the book of Psalms and sing. And we do it ourselves. And we've done it here in church many times, even if we have not realized it. Because we've all read, oh, quote it, Psalm 48, I didn't put the verses down. But praise the Lord, great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. That's all taken from Psalms 48. People have sang Psalms 23 in different fashions. The, uh, we all know the song, uh, I should say we all, but we say, create a clean heart of God. a clean heart of God. Create a right spirit of me. Where do you think that song is taken from? Psalm 51. All the words are taken from that song. We may not have sang the whole song, but that song is taken from there. Or hear my cry of God, attend unto my prayer. Psalm 61. There are some songs on here, I won't lie, that I don't know upon myself. And then, of course, I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. Psalm 18, verses 3 and 46. I know we've sang Psalm 3, 3 through 5, Thou, o Lord. But don't ask me to sing it because I am a true white boy and I'm probably going to mess that one up even though I know it. And then we all know Psalm 118, 24. This is the day, this is the day. These are all words, Eric. All the words are taken directly from the Psalms. So I want to throw that out there for you so you have that as well. So it's not like the Psalms are a thing in the past, but rather there are portions of them that we sing today, even in our own church services, even if we don't realize it. If we wanted to, to go to the book of Psalms, we can get that song, word for word. We may not have the chorus or the sheet music to it right there, but because we, I'm sure we sing it different than they sang it back then. But these are still songs that we sing today that are taken from the book of songs. With that being said, we're going to bow our heads in prayer and we're going to prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we thank you that you're God who reigns on high and there's none like you, Lord. Even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below. That no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds would be in one mindset. We want to pour that we may worship you in sincerity and truth. That the Holy Ghost may move, making himself visible if he so chooses. Anoint the song leader and the musicians as they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords, Lord. Give them a special blessing as they lead us in songs you'd have us to sing. Anoint the pastor as mind and his lips as he brings forth the words you have us to hear today. And I pray, Lord, that you anoint our minds and our hearts that they would be good soil for your word to follow and that we may remember it throughout the week. But even greater than that, that we may apply it to our lives and be transformed in your very image and your Father. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.